Announcements, anything that we need to share? All right. Would you please stand as you are able and join with me in our opening hymn? and then to thy need God as a mother does be having some trouble syncing the words and the music. Uh, we'll work on that. <laughs> Good morning. God lifts us from death to life and preserves us for God's purposes through the compassion of Jesus Christ our Lord and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. With thanksgiving, praise the Lord. Son of God, you walk on the waters of turmoil to meet us in the midst of your purposed journey for our lives. Help us to recognize your presence, remember your promise, rely on your power, and receive your peace through every storm. Amen. All right. Let us confess our sins to the Lord of all who is generous to all who call upon him. Would you please join with me in our prayer of confession? Lord Jesus, we call upon you, save us. We are intimidated by our circumstances, distracted from your purposes, drowning in deaths and fears. We are presumptuous about your will, belittling others, than magnifying ourselves. We envy the blessings of others, secretly despising their dreams. We have hardened our hearts to the suffering of our brothers and sisters. 
feeding ourselves in face of the injustice that holds them captive. Lord Jesus, who searches our hearts, lift us from sin and help us to walk with you in faith, humility, and brotherly, sisterly love. Amen. Our God sees all, knows all, forgives all, restores all through Lord Jesus Christ. No one believes in no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Please sit down. Christ has freely given us the gift of grace and salvation. Let us therefore freely bring our generous gifts of gratitude to him. We stand for the doxology. Thanks to you, O Lord, for your sustaining presence and abundant grace. Receive now these gifts we bring to you out of our generous provision in our lives. May they be used to satisfy the hungry in famine, relieve the oppressed in time of trouble, and proclaim everywhere the good news of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. This is our time of joys and concerns. You guys have any celebrations or concerns to lift up this morning? All right. Do we want to sing her happy birthday? <laughs> Talking about Hawaii. You guys have been there? Many times. Many times. Wow. Oh. It's like it doesn't exist anymore, isn't that about it? Yeah. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, Richard. We have several members who are traveling or have gone this weekend, but so prayers for them. And we also want prayers for the many people moving, I think, and students moving back to dorms or apartments or whatever, but just people moving in general. You bet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also want to lift up our kids that are all starting school, not just the kids, but not the students, but teachers and staff people. It's uh, This will be a strained time getting back in the swing of things. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I think Friday, I think uh, Friday will be the first day in, in first grade for Arthur. So, really starting real school, not kindergarten at this point. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any other uh, concerns? Just uh, pray for our nation and uh, 
divisive time that we can try to find ways to communicate in our differences, communicate respectfully in our differences so that we can find solutions that move us in a positive direction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Would you uh, join me in the prayer that Christ Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God of our present trouble and promised triumph, open our eyes to see you in the midst of our struggles. Open our ears to hear your words of invitation and assurance. Open our minds to recall your wonderful works and miracles. Open our hearts to glory in your name and seek strength in your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The New Testament reading this morning is from Romans 10, beginning at the fifth verse. Moses writes about the righteousness that comes from the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith talks like this. Don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven, that is, to bring Christ down. Or who will go down into the region below, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead? But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message of faith that we preach. Because if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and in your heart you have faith that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Trusting with your heart leads to righteousness, and confessing with the mouth leads to salvation. The scripture says, all who have faith in him won't be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek, because the same Lord is Lord of all, who gives richly to all who call on him. All who call on the Lord's name will be saved. So how can they call on someone they don't have faith in? And how can they have faith in someone they haven't heard of? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who announce the good news. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of these words. Uh, join together in our first in our hymn sing, Precious Lord Take My Hand, number 474. Let me stay. 
Our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Right then, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side of the lake, while he dismissed the crowds. When he sent them away, he went up onto a mountain to, by himself to pray. Evening came and he was alone. Meanwhile, the boat, fighting a strong headwind, was being battered by the waves and was already far away from land. Very early in the morning, he came to his disciples walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! They were so frightened, they screamed. Just then, Jesus spoke to them, Be encouraged, it's me, don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. Then Jesus, or Peter got out of the boat and was walking on the water toward Jesus. But when Peter saw the strong wind, he became frightened. As he began to sink, he shouted, Lord, rescue me. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him, saying, you man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? When they got into the boat, the winds settled down. Then those in the boats worshiped Jesus and said, you must be the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So last, uh, last Friday morning, you remember last Sunday, my uh, daughter Sheila was here from Texas and uh, Last Friday morning, we came together as a family and went down to Lake Shelbyville and rented ourselves a pontoon boat and went for a nice ride on a pontoon boat. Do you remember what the weather was like last Friday morning? We got out about, oh, half hour, 45 minutes out when it started to rain and we could see the clouds getting darker and darker and darker out in the west and coming at us. We tried to kind of cancel and reschedule, but uh, the people at the uh, marina would have none of that. And so we went. We did okay. The rain started. But it was when I saw the lightning off in the distance that I realized it's time we get off of this water because that aluminum boat is a little bit like a lightning rod sticking out there in the middle of the water. And we were on it. So, it was our anxiety level, it went up a little bit when it rained, but then it went up quite a little bit when it started to lightning. I was thinking about this story here this morning. Here are these disciples, these followers of Jesus. They're out on a boat in the middle of the night when a storm comes up. Doesn't say anything about lightning in here, but it talks a lot about wind and waves and all of that sort of stuff. And I'm sure that their anxiety level was fairly fevered pitched. I don't think they had things like life preservers and stuff like that like we have today. So your chances of the thing going under and you going under with it would be fairly great, I would think. It's hard to understand. Jesus actually sent them out, you know? 
knowing what was likely to happen, I mean, after all, Jesus is that one who knows everything, right? Son of God knows everything. Do you think that he knew that somehow the weather was going to turn nasty in the middle of the night for those guys? Maybe he just needed to get away. That's for sure. He had had some really some strong ministry that involved him a great deal, and I'm sure that he was excited and just needed to get away and go have kind of a, a Sabbath, if you will. So he sent the guys out. The weather gets nasty in the middle of the night, which I think that it's inclined to do. They're afraid. And Jesus comes out walking on the water early in the morning to, doesn't seem like he's going to rescue them, but they reach out in their fear and anxiety. Peter asks, Lord, kind of this act of faith, you know, when you think about it, he sees Jesus walking on the water and he wonders, can I do that too? And says, you call me out. And Jesus calls him to come to him. And he was doing pretty good until he started to see the surroundings around him and the waves. And he got more focused on that than on watching Jesus. And he sank. He sank. And it was then that Jesus reached out to him. The weather changed. It calmed. And away they went. This story is told in two other Gospels. Mark and the Gospel of John tell this, or a story that's very similar to it. Jesus walking on the water, the supernatural act. And we usually we, re we read it that way, but as I was reflecting upon this, you know, there's a spiritual way of looking at this. Jesus calls us to be in ministry and to go. You know, what does he say repeatedly in the Gospels? Follow me, follow me, follow me. And then once you begin to follow him, you begin to get that commitment, that calling is what the term that we use. Once you begin to experience some sense of calling to Jesus, then you get sent to go in ministry, right? You go out and you go where the people are and you carry this gospel message that you experienced and learned from Jesus. You're called to go out. And what happens when you get out there? What's your experience when you feel this calling and you're following the Lord of life and nearly always you're going to a place that can be a challenge? A challenge is a way of saying it could be a really difficult time there. You know, you're, you're called to go to problems. You aren't necessarily called to just go where everything is. Uh, what's, what's a nice term? You know, a cakewalk. Ministry is not a cakewalk. It's a place where you go where people are hurting, suffering. You go where there's issues, painful issues. And you get caught up in the turmoil of all that. Like this storm, right? Ministry can be a storm. When you've gone to help families that are going through painful times, whether they're your personal families or whether they're friends that you know, you know, when people are going through a difficult time of, of health issues or loss of jobs or, I mean, there's so many different things that really kind of bring us to our knees. When you go there, you go with this heart, wanting to love and to care and to bring peace, but you're also going to deal with some turmoil. So that's what these guys are in. And they're exhausted. See, I, we were, uh, we were all, most, I think all of us here, pretty much all of us were raised in basically a mainline denomination. We were raised in a social gospel. You know, so I remember uh, Emil Pascal, a chaplain that I had in junior high college in Lincoln, said that loving God meant serving others. This is, the, this is the path. And we are. That's a part of it. You know, it's being called into ministry. 
The problem is you're going to have those struggles and those conflicts. And if you don't stay attached to your relationship with Christ Jesus, you're going to run out of you're going to run out of peace, joy, love, and hope for other people, and you're going to crash and burn. Am I making sense? I you know it sure was my story. And I think it's our story. Serving others is a part of the work of the kingdom, and as citizens of the kingdom of God, we're called to do that, no doubt about it. But we have to have that relationship with Jesus that feeds us so that we have something to give to others. Or we end up in this terrible storm that can swamp us. And honestly, it does some folks. It's a both and. When Jesus gets connected, the peace comes. Have you noticed in your own personal struggles of life and we've all had them. They may be different, some are similar, but we've all had them. Have you noticed that in the turmoil of, the, of this period of time, however long it lasts, is when you reach out in prayer to the Lord of life and you say, Lord God, help me. There is something remarkable that happens in those moments because the door is open for God's Spirit to embrace us, like in this story this morning, embrace us and bring peace in the midst of the turmoil. And we grow deeper in our faith and trust in the Lord of life. It's a miracle. I think that's every bit as much a miracle as it is Jesus walking on the water. Is that a miracle? You bet it is. But to experience the peace of the Lord in the midst of our own personal turmoil, this enormous gift, that's a miracle too. I have come to this realization, awareness, that in those moments of what we would call crises, when we are beyond our ability to control the issues, when we can't control it all anymore, is when the door is open for a power greater than ourselves, that spiritual power that we call God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit to enter and to begin to guide and change us. The peace that passes all human understanding is what Paul talks about. That is a reality that is available to us, but it's only when we open the door by letting go of, <laughs> holding hold the door closed. That's my metaphor for today. You guys ever, anybody else ever hang on to that door to keep it closed? I'm in control here. I be the man, you know? No. Power greater than ourselves. All right. And in the end, they said, then those in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, you must be the son of God. When you have experienced that presence of peace, something awesome has happened and you want it again and again and again. All right, amen. You guys ever been in a boat when it's in that big storm? One, whether it's uh, metaphorically or literally? It's kind of, uh, oh yeah. I, th I think of our earlier comment, you're kind of in one of those boats right now. Hang on. Yes, sir. All right. Let me go a little further. How about Stand as you are able and join with me in our closing hymn. We've a story to tell to the nations. 
number 569. Friends, go in peace. Take the spirit of the living God with you. Embrace it this week and share it this week with the folks that you come in contact with. The world that we live in is a hurting place and a lot of folks are going through very difficult times. You have some good news that you can share. So please share it. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.